Now to Exodus 12. <laughs> and, um, but what I'm going to do is, um, there, I'm going to read, um, let's see. I'm going to read parts of this, but I think from verse, oh, somewhere along here, I'll read straight through. But I'm, I want to, what I want to do is probably better than, maybe, better than you reading along with me, is for you to listen and see if you can get the general thing that these scriptures are talking about, okay? So, ready? And there will be a test. I have the papers right here, right after I read this, so actually I don't. I am a liar. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread. And thus shall ye eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet and your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. And you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. For in this selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall you observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. All right, any thoughts? from anybody. <laughs> Mallory? Oh, well, that's, that's called honing in. Yes, it is, that's, and, and how huge is that? You know, yeah. Where is it called that? Oh, I know, that's right. Right, amen, amen. Um, does, did anybody feel like, well, let me just ask you this. How many of you have felt like you've sort of had the lay of the land on that before this class, that you sort of understood that right there? Okay, good. Um, because it's good to know the word of God. Amen? Um, well, um, I want to just say that what I read is not one thing, and it's not meant to be one thing, and in fact, it's meant to be three separate things that have their own identity and their own reality and, and bear certain truths. And... Um, <clears throat> Uh, I don't think that I noticed this, but, uh, you know, I mean, if, if my eyes look tired and I seem tired, I spent the whole day on this. I noticed it sometime back. And what I noticed was a very common thing that was said over and over in chapter 12 and 13 that I thought was the same thing. 
I thought it was saying the same thing. And, but, but I thought, this is really annoying that he's saying this same stuff over and over within a short, short, short distance here. Um, yeah, it's like from the, from the end of chapter 12, when I say the end, not the very end, moving almost directly into 13 and then twice in 13. So we're talking run together very closely and saying what appears to be the same thing, but it is not only the same thing, it is very important differences that I spent the whole day going, oh, okay, I gotta, I gotta sort this out because I could see how it would be easy for any of us to read that and just go over it and go, okay, I got it. You never got it with just one read through. <laughs> it like takes a lifetime of searching the scriptures, but nonetheless, um, no, we're not gonna do that. So, um, so what I wanna do, uh, and I don't know if I will finish this tonight, but I wanna start on something that divides these things up. And I think you'll be pleased to see how specific and how accurate the word of God speaks and how general we think and we, we read. I mean, you know, and we'll go, Good grief, man. Do I mean, do I read the whole Bible this way and just read over and assume that I got that? And it's like, oh, you know, and, you know, the, the importance of that is not so that we become Bible scholars. Because these three things are going to be divided out because they're important to God. And we need to be in a certain place to meet the importance of each one. But I just, what I did was I just read a general thing that included all of them. And we would go, yeah, oh, yeah, I, I basically know that. But we don't. We don't. And so that's, that's what I want to do is, is embark on this. So uh, Exodus 12. <clears throat> And verse 21 through 27, and you can follow along if you so please. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that it is in, in, is in the basin and strike the lentils and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning, for the Lord will pass through and smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lentil and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over, um, will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. All right, one, I mean, there are many common threads, but probably the most common is that the Lord's going to pass through, there's, you know, the destroyer, da-da-da-da, that, that thought. But just from what I read there, what would you say is the theme of just this section one, this part one? What? Anybody? Okay, that's close. But I mean, that's part. That's part of it, yes. Because it's two things. Well, the death of the lamb. Where'd the blood come from, for God's sake? <laughs> you know? So this is emphasizing, and, and what we're going to find when I read back through these other two, that it sounds almost exactly the same, but there are, it's not the same. There are differences, and there's a different theme and thing that God is wanting to communicate. All right. So, 
uh, verse 24, and you shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever, and it shall come to pass when ye be come to the land which the Lord will give you according as he hath promised, that, he shall, that ye shall keep this service, and it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, what mean ye by this service? You ever heard that before? Um, that ye shall say it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our homes and the people bowed the head and worshiped. Okay, so um, the, the first thing to notice is up in verse uh, 21 and it says, draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and here it is, kill the Passover. That ought to slap you right in the face. It said, kill. it didn't say, wait for him to pass over. It said, kill the Passover. Okay. So, so what if our understanding of the Passover has been wrong all this time? And what if we, we saw the death, it was all about a death angel Passover. Uh, Kelly? I noticed that it said, draw out, take you, and kill. Right. That's a lot of involvement right there. Right. I, I have kill also emphasized because this Passover has to be killed. And that doesn't mean in the Passover. It means in that the lamb of the Passover. That is the Passover. <clears throat> All right. So... I wrote after kill the Passover, I wrote the Passover's not being that, uh, the Passover itself, the thing that we call the Passover, is not that of being saved from a death angel, but a killed lamb. And I thought it was interesting that it used the word kill instead of slay or offer, kill it. I think it's, I think it's important. And I think, I think that anything the Lord says is important. And I think his word use is is important um, because we're trying to find his heart, not just subjects in a book. Amen? So, um, and then I thought it was interesting when you go down to verse 23, for the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over. Okay? Anybody see something in that in relation to the other thing that we just talked about? Kelly? When he sees the lambs and then kills. Okay. Anybody else? We're comparing it to kill the Passover. Mallory? Yeah, you got killed Passover, and you have the Lord Passover. Right. So one is a noun and one is a verb, and they're two different things. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay. One is the result of the other. So what is the important thing here? I'm trying to get the important thing. The important thing is kill the Passover and, of course, put the blood, but kill the Passover. And the passing over is just a verb action based on what is the Passover, which is the killed lamb. Okay. All right, so how many of you want to enter into the Passover? <laughs> oh, good, you'll, be, you'll all be killed then. <laughs> oh, praise God, amen. Uh, how many of you don't want to be killed and you just want to pass over? <laughs> My flesh, maybe, something like that? <clears throat> yeah, that's right. All right, so... Um, so that, I was looking at that today and going, oh my God, one's a verb and one's a noun. One's the subject. And one's the verb. And particularly in this case, even though they're not linked together in a sentence where you would draw that out, there is no way the destroyer won't pass over unless the first, the killed lamb and his blood was not displayed. And that's just a fact. So the first thing we're discovering here 
is out of all that I read when we began, which included really a whole lot of different things, we're sunk into this thing by the Lord saying, okay, Moses, call the elders and tell them this, you know, um, that, that um, I want you to, to draw out, go get the Passover, bring it, kill it, um, put the blood on the doorposts, um, and the result of that is there will be a destroyer that will go by, and he will pass over. But, gentlemen, elders, don't be deceived. That's not the Passover. The killed lamb is the Passover. Isn't that great? Yes. I mean, that's, that's wonderful. Um, so then um, he says... Uh, in uh, verse 24, and you shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee, an ordinance to thee, and to uh -huh, thy sons. It's plural. Thy sons. Is that significant? Absolutely, it's significant. Okay? And you'll see how much more when we get into the other two and start reading and going, oh, I thought this was an exact copy of the first. It's not, not at all. Way different. Okay. So, thy sons forever. And then, uh, let's see. That ye shall keep this service. Okay. Interesting wording. You shall keep this service. What does that hearken to? Let my son, my firstborn son, go that he may come do service to me, which is sacrifice, which results in a feast. Remember that? Yes. This is the service. Kill it. <laughs> you want to, the Lord would say, you want to do service to me? then embrace the slaughtered lamb. Embrace the slaughtered lamb. And it focus, focused on death, the death of the lamb. The service focuses on the death, the death of the lamb. Does our, does our service, you know, we say, well, I want to do service to the Lord. I think I'll, I think I'll mop the floor. I think I'll teach Sunday school. Uh, is there a dead lamb involved? I mean, I, you know, this has, you know, by the way, this has nothing to do with me. I'm just quoting scriptures. <laughs> you know, don't kill the messenger. <laughs> All right. Um, because I'm already dead. Anyway. Uh, verse 26, and it shall come to pass when your children, plural, shall say unto you, what mean ye by this service? You're killing a lamb, what mean ye by this service? What a great question. Not just see it, not just believe it, not just follow, you know. I mean, it, I, it, when I was reading this today, it occurred to me and I thought, I, I, thought, I need to say to every, people everywhere I go when they hear me preach, it is not, it, your belief system cannot be based on what I've taught. It has to be based on what you know of the Lord uh, and in the Word. Amen? Now, I believe that the Lord gives me seeds. More than a lot of preachers, they preach a sermon and it's, everything's there. I throw out a lot of seeds that if you'll water them and take a little time, bing! It starts popping up new life out of it, not just information or, or a good sermon that made me feel better for the day. So um, when your children shall say, plural, what mean ye? I love that. I love it. Okay, so I want you to notice that the children bring it up. I think they're going to become sons if they eat this thing in, with understanding. Isn't that great? There's hope. There's hope. There's hope. 
but not for you. No, not really. <laughs> for you in him and by him and to him and through him. All right. So verse 27, that you shall say it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. What is this? What meaneth this? It's the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover. I want you to notice the Lord's Passover again, okay? The Lord's Passover. It's the Lord's. It's not the people's. I thought it was a people. I thought the Passover was all about everybody gathering to Jerusalem and celebrating the feast of Passover. And he's saying, it's mine. And Mallory was hitting on that in John when, when it says when the time came for the Passover of the Jews, and you go, oh, my God. He's just going to a religious party or whatever uh, because it's no longer the Lord's Passover. The lamb has been uh, so watered down. You know, and remember that it said, don't, don't water this thing down up here. When it says that in chapter 12, I didn't read that part. It says, don't water down the lamb after you kill it. And you check it out. <laughs> don't water it down. <clears throat> um, don't boil it. Don't do all that kind of stuff. So uh, it is the Lord's Passover who passed over. The what meaneth thee by this service, which is the killing of the lamb? It is the Lord's Passover who passed over. But again, don't confuse. See how they're both right there together, but one's a verb and one's the subject, the object of the sentence. <clears throat> and again, that, that's going to come up in different places. And it says that he passed over the houses of the children of Israel. Who passed over the houses of the children of Israel. Okay. You have to consider why it would say that. You have to because... It's not talking about the firstborn here. I mean, it's not. That's not the subject. The lamb is the subject. And the, the death of the lamb, the sacrifice of the lamb is the subject. So he says they passed over the houses of Israel. Remember two groups, firstborn and Israel? You, you know what? That little, that little two-part thing, you need to keep that in your mind forever when you're reading. Yeah, it is. All right, so um, pass, passed over the houses of the children of Israel. And why did he do that? Because they had the token of death. That, the, that a death, and it was the death of that lamb, happened in their house. Okay? And so here's the token of it. Here's the proof of it. Here's the manifestation of it. Here's the real. Not it's not the reality of it, but it is shows that there is a reality of it in this house. Right. Yeah. Amen. All right. So uh, in Egypt, when he smote the Egyptians, notice the wording there. When he smote the Egyptians, he didn't say when he smote the firstborn. Okay? Is that significant? Yeah. And we'll see change-ups as we go here in these little stories that seem to say the same thing. Um, and delivered our houses. And notice, and the people bowed the head and they worshipped. They worshiped. Um, I, I have some other little notes I jotted down here. Uh, they bowed down and worshiped. And I wrote down, 
Their response at least shows that this is sacred territory to them. This is the only of the three that evoked worship. Holy, holy, holy is the lamb that was slain. We're seeing a microcosm of the book of Revelation when they're gathered around the slain lamb and they're bowing and they're worshiping. And the other two are important, important, important. But this slain lamb brought it all about. Okay? All right. So let's go to chapter 13 now, just the next chapter, Exodus 13. And I want to start with verse 3, and I'm going to read it again, and I'm going to ask you to listen carefully and see if you don't see the similarities, but maybe now a little sharper ear. And Moses said unto the people, remember last time it was the elders, remember this day in which ye came out from Egypt, out of the house of bondage, for by strength of hand the Lord brought you out from this place. There shall no leavened bread be eaten. This day came ye out in the month Abib. And it shall be when the Lord shall bring thee into the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, which he sware unto thy fathers to give, a land flowing with milk and honey, that thou shalt keep this service in this month. Seven days shalt thou eat unleavened bread, and in the seventh day shall be a feast to the Lord. Unleavened bread shall be eaten seven days, and there shall no leavened bread be seen with thee, neither shall there be leaven seen with thee in all thy quarters. And thou shalt show thy son, thou shalt show thy son in that day, saying, This is done because of that which the Lord did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. And it shall be for a sign unto thee upon thine hand and for a memorial between thine eyes that the Lord's law may be in thy mouth. For with a strong hand hath the Lord brought thee out of Egypt. Thou shalt therefore keep this ordinance in his season from year to year. Can you see how it would be possible to read through that quickly and just assume, oh, we're going over the same ground. Oh my Lord, but now can you, can some of you see that this is a very different subject? What, okay, so what's the main subject here? The lamb was the the main one before, what's the main subject? Pardon? No. Unleavened bread. Sorry, I, I probably stepped back and you turned it up and then I'm, really? Okay, well, they're, they're fuzzy little creatures. Yeah, fuzzy little creatures, little demons. There's, there's some little bald ones in there too. But there's. All right, so you see that it's a completely different subject. And then when you look closer, you go, oh, my Lord, it sounds the same. When your children, da, 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 or when this or that or whatever, because it's saying basic, and he brought you out with a strong hand and, you know, all of this, and you're going, okay, yeah, I know this. So you go, you read faster. But when you look closely, wow, the differences are amazing. Um, so uh, let me just go by my little red ones here. Verse 3, remember this day. Okay, two things there. Remember wasn't used in the other one, but there was a word used. We'll, we'll maybe, depending on how this goes tonight, uh, I rushed madly and was finishing up in my office to try to get a chart to go divide these three things and to show the differences in what their emphasis is. And if not, then we'll try to cover it next week. All right, so remember, 
remember. And then the next two words are this day, okay? This day, look at the ter first two words in verse 4. This day, uh, look at verse 5, the last about five, six words there. Keep this service in this month, in this month. Now, if you remember the, the Lord's Passover is eternal. Am I right or wrong? It, it, he wasn't saying, he never used the word day and this time in the month and all this kind of stuff. It is the Lord's Passover. You shall keep it forever. All right? So we're seeing the importance of one over the other, but not to the exclusion of the other. All right? Um, and also, let's see. Okay, just making sure that was, the, that was taken care of. All right, so then, uh, in which ye came out from Egypt. All right, so it's going to emphasize a certain truth in relationship to that. Out of the house of bondage. The house of bondage. Now, the Passover wasn't to get them out of the house of bondage. Okay? But this is, and, you, and that's a big difference. It's a completely different motivation, all right? And then it uses that same thing. By strength of hand, the Lord brought you out from this place. You, know, you see how the similarities are really there. Um, verse 4, this day came ye out in the month of Bib. Emphasizing time, emphasizing that reality. And then verse, um, the end of verse 5, continuing that theme, that thou shalt keep this service in this month. Now, were we not introduced to the service of offering the lamb? But we, he didn't say keep it in this month, not here, and it wasn't that because that wasn't the important thing. This, but this is not the serving up of a slaughtered lamb. This is the service of eating unleavened bread. Okay. Um, and then, you know, verse 6 begins with seven days. Seven days, seven days, thou shalt eat unleavened bread, and in the uh, or six days, yeah, seven days, and in the seventh day shall be a feast to the Lord. Okay, so was there a feast in relationship to the Passover? Yes, there's a Passover feast. <laughs> I know y'all know this, but I, I I have high expectations for you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I expect you to go, yeah, the Passover feast where we're with the Father and we're, yeah, no kidding. Thanks for teaching us about the prodigal son and thanks for about this. And I'm kidding. I'm happy to be in the Lord and just sharing with you guys. And that's the truth. Um, it shall be a feast. Mmm. To the Lord. To the Lord. Okay. What did it say of the other one? It's his Passover. It's not something you do to him. It's us doing it when it comes to the Feast of Unleavened Bread. But the Passover is his Lord's Passover. It takes it out of our hands. I mean, even though there's an involvement, it is the Lord's. This is the feast that we're doing to him, to the Lord. 
um, verse uh, 8, and thou shalt show thy son in that day. There's the day thing again, in that day. But interesting wording here again. The other one said what? Plural, thy sons. This one says you shall show your son. The next one's going to use a little different word because it's significant to each part of this three-part thing that is, again, 12 and 13 were not originally divided. It was one thing. And there's almost uh, just a couple of verses that divide this stuff from one after the other to the other. And we go, well, why do you just keep repeating? I'm going to go to chapter 14 and get out of this maze and this conundrum. <clears throat> All right. Um, show thy son. Remember that, okay? Show thy son in that day, saying, this is done because... This is done because of that which the Lord did unto me. Now, in the, in the first one, it was what the Lord did unto the Lamb. Okay. So what is, what is one of the significant things of this second one, the, the unleavened bread? This, one of the significant things is that this is personal and it's set in time. That day that month, but it's, it's a personal thing. This is done because of that which the Lord did unto me when I came forth out of Egypt. And this is what he's saying to his son. He's showing this to his son. Son, this is, I'm your dad, <laughs> and this is what happened to me, okay? And then verse 9, and it shall be for a sign unto thee. Okay, so there is a, uh, you, you know what signs are, right? Signs, are you familiar with the little phrase signs and wonders? You know, to me, anytime I see signs, I wonder. Anyway, that's, I don't know why I say these things. Anyway, uh, it is, uh, usually thought of in terms of miracles, but remember Jesus said these signs will follow them that believe. Okay, So it is a sign of something and not the very thing in itself. Okay, Sign unto thee upon thine hand. So the sign is unto you only upon your hand, but it is a memorial upon you, a, a memorial to you between your eyes. That's right here, that's right. The third eye. That's India, sorry. Yes. I think, because that's where they wore the phylacteries and stuff. They hung down right here. <clears throat> so, sealed in the forehead. Um, but in the same manner, because the, the next phrase is going to be connected to it, just like those things, that the Lord's law may be in thy mouth. All right. So he's wanting something in relationship to your hand and something in relationship to your eyes and something in relationship to the law being in your mouth. All right, so I'm going to just, you know, we got to move on here. But So I'm going to just leave this with you and say, I know that you know all about unleavened bread in the Bible. I don't need to explain any of this. I know that you're settled on that subject and you spent lots of time studying. <clears throat> so, so you know exactly what this is saying. <clears throat> so then he says, for with a strong hand, again, we're getting that, hath the Lord brought thee out of Egypt. Thou shalt therefore keep this ordinance in his season from year to year. 
again, keep it. The other one said keep it too. But this says keep it in its season and from year to year. The other one said forever. So you get an idea of the significance here, don't you? All right. So let me make sure there's not anything else here. Uh, <clears throat> well, let me read to you. Let me read to you um, words that pertain to, to Israel and the firstborn, the two groups that came out that happened after they left Ramses, which is where they were at, and moved on, you know, on their journey to the Red Sea and therefore, because remember, they didn't go straight up and over and then cut across, which would have taken a 10 day journey. And this, I think this even, this might even mention that, I don't know. So let me just read it. This is uh, Exodus 12, verse 37 uh, through 39, I think. <clears throat> and the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Succoth, about 600,000 on foot. That's the men that were men, beside children. So what? The women don't get mentioned? <laughs> what? Send me back. I'll have a little talk with them. Anyway, and a mixed multitude. So the mixed multitude gets mentioned, and they cause trouble. <laughs> a mixed multitude went up also with them and flocks and herds even very much cattle verse 39 and they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt for it was not leavened because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry neither had they prepared for themselves any vit victuals food Okay, so we're seeing the unleavened bread in the journey. Amen? All right. So uh, is, this, is this the main emphasis then of the unleavened bread? Is that a good question? Okay. Well, so let me go uh, further back, uh, still in chapter 12, let me make sure here, yeah, still in chapter 12, but early, way, way early on, um, verse 8 and then verse starting in verse 15, uh, verse 8 says, and they shall eat unleavened bread. Verse 15, starting there. Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. And whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel, not from the firstborn. Man. Verse 15. And, you know, what I, one, one of the reasons why I'm doing this is I'm trying to get us to see there are so many significant things in here. And we may not understand them all, but we, we have this wonderful capacity. It's called speech. We can say, Lord, I don't have a clue. Open my eyes, but more importantly, open my heart. I don't just want to see something good. I don't want to impress people anymore. I want to see Jesus, and I want to be changed into that same image from glory to glory. So. So, Lord, there's so much here, and I don't have a clue. That's a good, that's good. Let it overwhelm us so that we just back off and say, you know what, I, you know, I'm not a, the little smarty pants I thought I was. <laughs> you know, and just say, I'm a dummy, but I'm your dummy, Lord. Talk to me. Talk to me. And he will. Just love him. Just lo don't treat him like a, a schoolmaster. You know, open my eyes, teach me this stuff so I'll be deep. Oh, you're deep, all right, but we won't discuss that. <laughs> we, won't go, we won't go in that area. <clears throat> um, so, uh, 
Where is it cut off? I just, oh, there it is. Okay, so verse 16. And in the first day there shall be an holy convocation, and in the seventh day there shall be an holy convocation to you. Interesting. The first time it didn't say to you. No matter, no manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat. That's the only work you can do. <laughs> no, it's not talking about Chipotle or something like that. Oh, good, we get to eat. <laughs> um, every, uh, no work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat. That only may be done of you. That's so cool. That is so cool. We make it, we make it study. Okay, well, the Sabbath is for study. The Sabbath is the Lord's, and I'm going to honor the Sabbath, and I'm going to be very holy. And so, How about just eat? But we don't. We study the book instead of eat the words. Remember? Or well, it said, take the book, okay? He didn't say read out of it. He said, eat it. <laughs> so let's, let's do it. Let's just like, oh, okay. I want to, Lord, make these words bread, unleavened bread. And let me be filled with it. And it's interesting that the same Passover thing that he's talking about in preparation for the Passover it became the Lord's Supper, and Jesus broke bread and said, take, eat, this is, yeah, praise God. Let's, let's just blend into him. You know what I mean? Let's just, and then we're lost in him. We're just a member, but we're, we're one with him, and it's him. Not I, but Christ. And Lord, I, I want to be lost so that I can be found in you not having mine own righteousness. But you can't be found till you're lost. Just get lost in him. Amen. Let the spirit of God flow on this in our hearts. Don't pass it up. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Praise God. I mean, I can, you know, I just, I feel the fluttering of the wings of the Spirit of God trying to land on Jesus in us, and we keep going. As soon as he gets close, we go, yeah, Lord, I need this. And he goes, you know, you just put the Lord up there, and the Holy Spirit goes, oh, if he's up there, I'm going back up there, you know. Drawing down to you by letting it be Christ, or at least acknowledging the Christ that's in you. Draw the Spirit, but we keep chasing him off. Grieve not the Spirit of God. Because we're always doing stuff outside of the nature of Christ instead of saying, I just, I want, Holy Spirit, I want Jesus in me. You know, I did this once. I said, okay, what is your mission? And this is how I kind of feel like I, this kind of stuff. I got close to the Holy Spirit. because He's going, you, you, ne you know, it's like, you know what it is. Could you, could you do that in me? Because we always go, the Holy Spirit's mission is to reveal Christ. Well, can you do that in me? Can you come down on Jesus in me and bring him forth instead of me? And you know what? That's what he wants to do. So we're not, we're not crossing any lines there. Say, but you, you're treating him like, you know, He's a person. <laughs> He's that third person of the Trinity. And he wants to do this. <clears throat> um, verse 17, and you shall observe the feast of unleavened bread for in this selfsame day again have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall you observe this day, that's important, Observe this day in your generations by an ordinance, but now forever. Okay? Let's pass it down, though. This is saying let's pass it down. This isn't saying like the Passover is forever itself. 
We don't have to pass it down. We need to get on it and we'll ride that baby all the way through eternity. But this you have to pass down because it's personal. All right? Um, <clears throat> verse 18, in the first month on the 14th day of the month at evening. Okay, so there it is. That's again, being very specific exactly when, what time, all that kind of stuff. You shall eat. That's when you eat unleavened bread until the 1 and 20th day of the month at evening. Okay? Seven days, verse 19, seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eateth that which is leavened, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel. Whether he be a stranger or born in the land, you shall eat nothing leavened and all your habitations shall you eat unleavened bread. Okay. For seven days. For seven days. All right. Um, does anybody know any references in the New Testament to to unleavened bread? Anybody? Mallory, do you? It is. Okay. Anybody can quote it at all? Anything about it? Anything. Even fragmented. Mm -hmm. Do not eat the unleavened bread of malice or the, the leavened bread. What is unleavened bread? What? Leavened bread. Yeah. <clears throat> and the truth of, uh, of leavened bread is that it has something in it that puffs it up. It rises. It gets bigger. It gets more seen, you know, okay. So we, we call that, well, I just want to serve. Okay, well, get over here on this altar, my God. You know what I mean? Well, get over here on this altar, serve him with sacrifice. But I want to serve him, so I'm going to rise up and I'm going to do this and I'm going to be this and I'm going to say this and I'm going to do all that. And, you know, the, the thing that I guess bothers me is about this one. The others really didn't say, well, you're just going to be totally cut off there. You know what I mean? It's like, and I don't know what that means. I mean, I, you know, I would like to believe that means you're going to be circumcised. And your flesh will be cut off. <clears throat> but it sounds a little ominous there, so I don't know. Um... Um, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation. See, and, and it's, see, it's that 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 individual congre from the congregation. See, the the lamb is not a congregation. When we put that in the inside of us, we may all be together, but it's all lamb. So this is, this is very the day, the place, the month, the, you know, very connected to the earth and how, we're, how we are in the earth. And, you know, I, I would hope that there's a better word in the New Testament when it says, but, the, but, but eat the, you know, the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth or something. And, you know, it's like, Okay, well, because all of us will go, well, I'm sincere. Yeah, you're sincerely wrong. <laughs> you know, I mean, we are. I am. We are. We are. I, there is nothing within us that isn't unless it's Christ. Jim, did you have something? They did. Oh, that's good. Perfect. And, and the guard thing. Yeah, come up here and say it if you can remember it. See, you're going to be like me, aren't you? And you're going to go, I don't remember what I said. Seriously, just do the best you can. Yeah, it's uh, Exodus 12, 17 says, Ye shall observe 
the feast of unleavened and that word observe also means to guard to guard the feast of unleavened bread so it's just a little further down then he says if if you bring leaven in when you're supposed to be guarding the feast of unleavened bread then it's like when they came out of uh, Egypt they brought uh, they didn't have any leaven so it's like bringing in you're bringing into this feast that's supposed to be unleavened you're bringing in Egypt and you're mixing it and that's very serious Well, and I, what I was going to say is that I really like that word guard because, you know, we can say, well, guard, you know, so that, uh, but it's saying don't bring in Egypt or don't bring in malice and those things or, or don't bring in being puffed up. You know, the word puffed up is used a lot in the New Testament. And so when it says, you know, are you, are you puffed up? Are you leavened? That's what it would say. Well, what are you doing? What are you doing being leavened in this, you know, take the lower seat? He's saying, be unleavened. Lots of good hands. Robert? Can I just read? You may, of course. You want to come up here? Why don't you do that? First Corinthians 5 and verse 7 and 8. Okay. And we sailed away. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I, let me see if I can pull up verse 6. Okay. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven. What verse did you tell me to start with? Six. Okay. Your glorying is not good. Know you not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out, therefore, the old leaven. That you may be a, that you may be a new lump, as you are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and of wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Well, that's good. Yes. Okay, I need to close this thing down because I think we're going to run out. But, but uh, let me just end with this. Uh, um, the, the first one that we read about the Passover, the emphasis and the first emphasis and unleavened bread is the second, and then the firstborn will be the next one. The emphasis on eating the lamb is supposed to put us in a position that we won't eat leavened bread in our life, in our down here, in our ways. And that's why Corinthians uh, addressed it in a real life situation. And and so what it means is that in a certain sense, you could say that we're putting on lowliness, the lamb, the lamb. I mean, you can't get any lower than I'll be slaughtered for you guys so that you'll live, you'll be blessed, you'll go on. That spirit. And so that spirit should guide us into his ways and so that we are... Um, we are unleavened. We are not uh, um, 
pressing ourselves forward. We're not trying to be something. My God. Anyway, uh, you know, it's just, and it's, and, uh, and it's a, it, it should captivate us. It should flow down. It should move to, to that second part of unleavened where this is how we're going to do in our days and in our seasons. And we're going to live by this. And we're going to have this at work in us. And, and as Kelly was sharing in the chapters before that, it's all about uh, not being puffed up and everything. And, and all of that definitely relates to being leavened and rising when God said, don't rise and don't eat that. Don't eat that. And I, I, I think the hard part is, for me and all of us, is that we, we hear that and maybe even we're stirred by that, but that part of us, which is not Christ, um, you could say Haman, <laughs> is not Christ, is that which does rise. It does rise. It, per, it pushes itself, it lifts itself up. It, thinks more highly of himself than it ought. And uh, there are so many ways in which that can be seen. I mean, one of them is that we, we you know, well, I know more than that person, or, you know, they're, or they're dumb. You don't even have to say, I know more. When you say they're dumb, you're saying, I know more, you know, uh, or they're, you know, whatever. And to, and there's just too many Example. So you have to, uh, and, and I think probably going into Corinthians there where that scripture of, of leaven and unleaven is used and malice and all of that, uh, and then looking at the surrounding chapters about being puffed up, I bet you anything that he'll use it over and over, but even in different ways, you are puffed up because you da-da-da-da and this and that and that. Okay, well, that would be to do that, to search that out, to take that time that would be, that'd be sincere, <laughs> and that would be pure, and that would be, you know, and that would be um, saying, Lord, I hear it, I'm moved on to you by this class, but Lord, I want you, and I want, I want, you know, I don't want there to be whole chapters, maybe even whole books that I live contrary to, because I don't spend any time you know, I, it's like you allow, Lord, you allow the dove to come down on me, and then I, you know, that's like even if he's there, I shut him off and go to my old life, and after a while he wanders off and goes, okay, well, you know, nothing here. And uh, there, this o there's an openness that needs to just happen more and more of the word and of the heart of the Lord that has nothing to do with being Bible scholars or deep, deep people. I don't want to be a deep person. I want Christ to have his place in this vessel. And um, so, can we just pray that toward that end? Yes. Okay, amen. Father, we just, um, we just are, we, we sense the spirit of God on this and we sense that you came down, you fell, you, um, you're, you're stirring something within us. And we don't want that to just be this momentary thing. We've gotten used to that. And we've, we've just lived a long time just living that way and never letting the Holy Spirit follow us up from that. And so Spirit of God, um, breathe on these words and they be, may they become like uh, bread and lamb to us as we eat it, as we eat it. And we are incapable of making that happen, but we want it for Jesus' sake. We do. We want it for Jesus' sake. And so on the, on the first front that we mentioned, we want this, Lord, to be your Passover, not ours. We want it to be your Passover. And on the second front, we want this to be a feast to you, something we can do to you, for you, to, to, to eat uh, that 
unleavened bread of your body that didn't lift itself up but was broken. And you said, eat this broken bread. Eat this unleavened bread and put it in you. And, and, and this, this cross way that I'm about to go, see it as your life too and eat it. So Father, we, we humbly, humbly ask, not because we deserve it, but because you want your son, Father. Please get your son out of us. Please get your son out of us. We put it in your hands. And we do trust you and we thank you that we could even pray like this. And we love you, we love you, we love you. And we give you all the glory for any results and we take none of it to ourselves because we deserve nothing. But you give us bread to eat. You give us bread to eat. In Jesus' name, amen.